How's everyone doing today? This is Zach Allen, and I thought this would be interesting if we went and took a look at, at some of the differences between a pitching wedge swing and a driver swing. And you know, one thing that I hear so much is I always hear people talk about how a driver and an iron are, are the same. You swing the same, you set up the same, and uh, you know, I beg to differ. They're definitely, the design is a little different, and your goals with each one are a little different. You know, um, Design meaning that an iron is built to be able to trap the ball against the turf, and that's what you want to do to be able to control um, the trajectory and the spin of the ball. And a driver is built to sweep the ball off of a tee. Uh, you know, um, also like we talked about your goals being different. Goals meaning that, um, you know, a driver is really the premium is on distance, you know. And uh, some, of, uh, some of the importance obviously is accuracy too, but you know, really if you're looking at a fairway that's 50 yards wide, probably the average size fairway at a public golf course, and uh, when you're hitting a pitching wedge to a green, they're probably 25 yards wide. So keep that in mind as we go through some of these swings here. Uh, this is Roy McIlroy, you know, um, current U.S. Open champion. And the biggest thing you'll see at address is just take a look at the difference between the driver and the iron in terms of the setup and the distance from the golf ball. Obviously, with an iron, you're going to set up closer to the ball because the shaft is shorter. You're going to be standing taller. Um, uh, all this is going to help you to be able to take a divot and trap the ball against the turf. But even with that said, the driver swing, obviously, it's a longer club. But look at how much farther he stands with the driver. You know, um, definitely, definitely a little difference there. So there's, that's, you know, you'll, you'll see why here in a second here. But as we continue on into the backswing of the driver, you're going to notice a little more level shoulder turn and definitely a flatter shaft angle and that's just the best way to swing a driver that really sets up just this nice sweeping blow to be able to uh to knock it right off that that ball that's on that high tee so with the iron as he takes it back you're going to notice his left shoulder turning on a little more downward angle and the club shaft standing up at a much steeper angle so that's designed there you know with his, with his shoulders turning on that angle it's much easier to hit the ball against the ground um, Talking about distance here, you know, um, you'll see here as he gets up to the top of his backswing with the driver, you're going to see he's going to take a much bigger shoulder turn, you know, and that's going to encourage more distance. You're going to see a bigger shoulder turn, a longer arm swing. Um, with the iron there, a much more compact backswing um, with uh, definitely less arm travel. If you ever try to hit an iron really far by taking a big backswing, you're going to notice it's not going to go farther anyways. It's just going to go higher. Um, the key to hitting your short irons farther, it's all about, like we talked about, being able to trap and compress the ball against the turf. Nice, low, flighted trajectory. That's, that really is the easiest way to hit them the farthest. Uh, as we continue on here with the driver, this big turn is going to, sh to, to really allow him to do some things in his downswing that are very different from the iron. So you're going to see his hips unwind at a very fast rate, and he's leaving his arms, club head, and shoulders well behind his hips. So as he gets down into the hitting area, you're going to see that club is approaching on a very inward angle, and his hips are well out in front, well turned out in front of his hands, arms, and club. Okay, The difference when the iron, he's going to do a little bit of that, but nowhere near as much. So his hips are going to unwind, but not quite as fast. So as he gets down in the hitting area, you're going to see his, um, his hips are definitely leading, but only ever so slightly, and his shoulders are not nowhere near as much close to the target as they are. Um, what that allows him to do with the driver there, that club is coming so much from the inside that uh, it's going to give him a lot more power, a lot more potential power, and it's going to set up a swing that really you know, swings out towards right field a little more and sweeps that ball right off the tee. Okay? From here, you're going to see you know, a little trademark that he has. His hips actually stop through the ball with his driver as his arms and hands just release away from him with a lot of rolling over of that golf club. And that, that he needs to do just because, you know, we talked earlier, that club is coming on such an inward angle, he's got to really use his hands to roll it closed. Uh, with the iron, you're going to see much less of both those things. His hands are going to stay closer to his body. And um, as he comes through the ball here, and here he's taking his divot, hands are staying closer to his body, and that golf club is a lot more stable. Um, you know, it's just square to the arc. It's not rolled over so much, and you're not seeing that big gap between his, uh, his center and his hands like you see there with the driver. Um, like we talked about, all that is designed 
to hit the ball as far as he possibly can. You know, um, the hips stopping there. You can see his hips stop so much. His right leg is pretty much locked and straight with the iron there. He's still got some flex in his right leg, and he's able to just consistently turn through the ball with the club following, um, following him consistently. But that's definitely one thing to really study here, man. It's, it's, it's great to see this, you know, just because you, you, can, you get a sense of what, what your goals are with each club and how they differ. You know, you're seeing a much higher finish here, a much fuller finish. Um, and uh, with the iron here, he's definitely going to go up to a pretty full finish. High up to the end of that follow through. But what I would suggest there is, you know, next time you're out on the driving range, say you're struggling with your driver, you're struggling with your iron, you might be swinging those two clubs a little too similarly. So knowing some of the differences between the iron and the driver swing might help you hit that particular club better. And uh, with that said, good luck out there.